Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I've got uh, an altar that I haven't done in a long time. I'm not actually sure if I've ever done a soul ring. Um, maybe, a long time ago. Uh, but today, uh, this was uh, uh, the first start of a, a set of a commission uh, that I did, these cards here, uh, minus the minus the strict. So, uh, Eternal Witness, Soul Ring, and uh, Steam Vents, and a few of these other cards here. Uh, I'll be doing these. Not, not all in this video, but um, I'll be doing these. I'll, I'll be sure I'll be posting uh, pictures of these on our Instagram account. Which is uh, the Stump Project at in, at, at the Instagram. Uh, so I've never really given a any kind of a tutorial or, or a run through of how I do or how Amber Joyce and I do our altars. Uh, we've had the best success with uh, using our airbrush. Now it's nothing fancy. It's just a a master's airbrush. It's just a I don't know a, a starter kind of thing and I think I'd like to get a, a better one, something with better air control. But um, this puts down a, a really nice flat base and I have a lot of people that ask us, um, how do you how do you get your paint so smooth? How do you um, how do you use airbrush? What airbrush do you use? Well I'm gonna try and answer some of those questions today. Uh, like I said, the, the airbrush itself is a is a master, uh, and like I said, it's one of the it's a lower end airbrush. It's one of the starter ones, but it works really really well. I got the set. It comes with three different types: uh, two gravity feet and a siphon. And uh, this was the medium sized one here, and I just mix it right inside the bucket and uh, spray on a sample sheet, uh, a piece of paper, just make sure I got the colors that I want, and just kind of build from there. And speaking of that, and that's kind of leads me to my next point. I hope I have enough time to go through all of this. I might have to make another video uh, on how I how I do my alters. But color matching is huge. You have to color match, and don't worry about painting over the artwork of the card. Go ahead and paint on there. Use your airbrush, paint on it, blend it in, blend what you're doing in with the original artwork, and it it makes it more cohesive. It doesn't look like, oh, you stopped at the border. Your color is obviously a little bit off and you can see exactly where it stops. Now, right now you can see on the gloss of the card, you can see right where I stopped and you can tell that I've painted over some of the actual artwork of the card. But that's no big deal because by the time you seal it, all that stuff gets blended in. So, bl so match your colors, get them as close as you can. And in order to enhance that match, Go ahead and paint over the artwork on the card. Now the airbrush is not by any means a replacement for your brush. Your brush is going to allow you to go in, paint the texture that you need. Now to paint the texture, not apply the texture. You want your paint to be thin, super thin. Um, a lot of times in tournaments, these cards are looked at by the head judges. They have to be looked at by the head judges and and um, to to be said that they're okay to play in the tournament. If a card is too thick, if the paint is too thick, it can be considered a marked card and not be allowed to be played in that tournament. Again, every head judge is different and some head judges won't allow any altered cards in their tournament. So it's completely up to each individual head judge. But to make your chances better, make sure that the paint is thin. Even when you're painting, water it down, dilute your paint make it really thin and work in layers. It's only going to help your overall quality of your card if you work in layers because now you're going to be creating that illusion of depth. You're going to have some uh, some more diluted colors and then you're building on that on top of it and it's just going to look like some other colors have been pushed back and it, like I said it's just going to create that illusion of depth whether you intended it or not. So like you see here, I use my airbrush. I can go in and you can paint the details. And if you get the values correct, and that's just a whole nother topic, your value is your um, ability to dictate the lights and the darks 
in your in your illustration in your painting uh, the lighter things are uh, are traditionally more of a light source whether it be a reflected spot or it's actually illuminating light the darker values are more things that are in shadow or minus light uh, so keep those things in mind as you're painting if it's a reflected it's going to have a, a higher value higher value means probably more white in your paint or more yeah, more white showing through, whether it be from your canvas or whether it be from actually adding paint, white paint to it. Um, darker just means more color. It doesn't necessarily mean adding black. It means more color. Um, it, you can add black. I would probably wouldn't add black. I'd probably add like a burnt umber, uh, something like that. Try to stay away from black itself as much as possible. You rarely ever do see that. But when you, as you paint, then you can go over that paint with an airbrush to kind of tint it, to kind of bring all the cohesiveness together and, and make, it, make it look like it's all one picture instead of, oh, here's some texture down here, here's a little bit of airbrush work over here. It's, it's just, just bring it all together. Don't forget to check out our Patreon. It's at uh, the link is at the top of the page or patreon.com slash MTG Altar Girl. Uh, check out our stuff there. Check us out on Instagram, the Stump Project on Instagram, uh, Stump Project on Twitter. And if you if you do any of these techniques, uh, tag me. Uh, let's let's take a look and see what you've done. I hope these things have helped. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching these videos. Continue to watch, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.